Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Joshua from University of Illinois at Brown Champaign. I'm going to talk about my work um, using uh, neural network to hunt for dark matter substructures in strong gravitational lensing. And this is my collaborators. Uh, Ken Yu is an undergraduate working with me, and Warren's a graduate student at Stanford, and Jen Pong is a professor from computer science, and my advisor, Gil Holder. Okay, sure. Um, so the story is about dark matter. So in our universe, most of the matters are dark, and they're invisible to us. And they interact mainly through gravity. So to detect them, you need to um, use some other in indirect method, like um, gravitational lensing, to detect them. Um, so we know that dark matter exists, but um, on large scale, it performs very well, very well compared with uh, unbody simulations. But on small scale, there are still some um, issues right there. For example, for embody simulations in upcode dark matter, they usually uh, produce like a bunch of like small satellites, halos around the big halo. So usually, we expect to see um, thousands or hundreds of these sub halos around our Milky Ways. But the observation only shows like there are roughly like 50 maybe of these sub halos these days. So. The task is to whether we can use a cosmological surface to detect some of these subhalos. And it turns out that strong lensing is actually a pretty good place to detect these subhalos. Um, the reason is that um, because dark matter subhalos are really dim, so there's no way to like see the stars um, in the subhalos. But if you look at the strong lensing, and you you will be able to see some uh, deflections um, on the strong lensing arc. So this is an idea of how strong lensing works. So if you have a gravitational potential uh, between the observer and the source galaxies, and you will see the light being banged by these um, gravitational potentials. And this is roughly how the strong lensing will work um, if you have a different source galaxy placing at these uh, different places. So for example, if you have a purple uh, galaxy put in far away from your central potential, you'll see some um, kind of shear-like distribution right there. But as soon as you move into the center of the potential, you'll start seeing the beautiful Einstein arc, like a green one, and the Einstein cross, like a red one. Um, so if you have some subhalos on the line of sight um, and of the strong lensing, in principle, there will be some um, certain deflection pattern uh, perturbations on the arc. And this is what it will look like. So for example, if you have a, a spiral galaxies that are being lensed by a smooth uh, potentials, you'll see a beautiful Einstein ring right here. And you can see the symmetry property of these um, lens spiral galaxies, which is really beautiful. And if you have some subhalos um, on the strong lens around the, at the lens plane around the strong lensing arc, this is what you will see. Um, the resolution is a little bit low, but you can see that it actually breaks the symmetry between these uh, um, Einstein cross. And if you have even uh, mass um, bigger subhalos, you'll see um, it causes an additional Einstein ring on the strong lensing arc. So, as long, uh, so we know that um, how substructure can cause the perturbation on the arc. The question is, can we use a deep neural network to do this task since these are all image data? Um, so before people tried with neural network, people actually tried it with uh, using more traditional method of building a um, maximum likelihood method. Um, and the challenge is that um, you actually need to come up with a really, really good lens model, which is called a smooth model, which you assume you only have a macro lens uh, without any perturbers, and try to fit a model and min minimize the chi-square. And then you come up with a perturbed model, which you put in a subhalo at a certain positions. And you need to get, uh, marginalize over all the parameters and try to find um, a local maximum that uh, minimizes the chi-square. You try to compare these two models and see which one fits better. And if the perturbed model fits better, then you know that um, it's more likely that there is a subhalo at this position. And so this is the data um, uh, from ELMA. And um, the challenge is that it's actually quite time consuming to analyze um, these data, and it requires a lot of um, 
um, human expertise and also computational times. And in the future, we're going to have way more lenses than now. So right now, we only have um, about 100, 2,000 lenses. But in the future, we're going to have uh, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of these strong lenses. So we really need a new way to um, try to analyze these uh, strong lensing data. And so um, I feel like deep, deep learning might be able to help with this task. So um, as a first stage, so I try to build up some simulation because we don't have those real data yet. So in the simulation, I try to build up a strong lensing uh, and well, with or without subhalos. So as you can see right here, I build up three different kind of strong lensing images and I put the subhalos at certain position around the arc. And so we have roughly um, 20,000 of these simulated images and we label, provided their subhalo position as a ground truth. And we use a SIE uh, model for it. And um, we train it with a dense net and on the 1080 Ti GPUs with PyTorch. Um, so this is this is uh, some preliminary result of our how our neural network pre perform. So it actually sees the so this is a image that are given to a neural network, and this is the correct answer we expect the neural network to predict, and this is their predictions of the probability map of the subhalos. So actually found that neural networks are able to um, detect dark matter subhalo um, in these images. And so in multiple cases, we see that they really detect uh, dark matter subhalos right there. So, and the good thing is that it actually can detect multiple subhalos at the same time. And this has been more challenging with traditional method because you need to um, go through a more and more prime space, which it's computationally really expensive. So in this case, actually, you can see that there's two perturbation right here. And the neural network actually predicts there will be uh, two subhalos in the systems. All right. And so the real interesting thing is when there is no subhalos, um, we expect the neural network to give us the prediction that there is no subhalos in the probability map. And it turns out that that is the case. And it's also the case for this one. But when we try to look into um, lower probability regime, this is what we actually found. So we found that when we zoom into the probability around uh, 0.05, um, it actually shows that the neural network learns that there will be no way to be any subhalos on the strong lensing arc, but it couldn't constrain that much in the dark places. So it's actually surprising that neural network learns how to reject the possibility of subhalos on this strong lensing. And for me, having a rejection is as powerful as uh, having a detection. So this is really uh, surprising that I uh, really learned a little bit, uh, really learned a lot from my neural network. And this, yeah, it's also another example of it. Um, so Due to the time, I think um, I just briefly summarize. So uh, I think that deep learning could be a really powerful tool um, to detect dark matter subjectors, and they also teach us how to do rejections. And um, so so far, we're building up more realistic simulations, and maybe try to use some cycle GANs to come up with a more realistic data, and try to see whether we can apply this test to real data soon. So thank you very much.